The spectre of homegrown terror has haunted security agencies in countries like Australia since 2001. It was revived last week in London by the horrific knife murder of a British soldier and this week in Sydney by the arrest of a man accused of threatening to kill a Commonwealth officer. Authorities' concerns are being heightened by the bloody conflict in Syria. It's become a magnet and a new training ground for militants around the world, including in Australia. To date, four Australians have died fighting in Syria against the Assad regime and 100 Australians are currently believed to be on the front line, even though it's illegal under Australian law. So who are these jihad warriors? Where are they coming from? And are they being transformed into dangerous radicals? Caro Meldrum Hanna's been investigating and a warning, this story contains some disturbing images. According to the video, this is Mata Abu al-Walid. To his friends and family, he was Yusuf Toprakaya, a Melbourne bricklayer and a father. He was killed in Syria last year. In this tribute video, posted online after his death in December 2012, he is shown making detonators for bombs and on night patrol with rebels in Syria. Proof that he was involved in fighting at the front line, a criminal act under Australian law. They're breaking uh, at least three laws. The Foreign Incursions Act, which makes it an offence for Australians to go and participate in this kind of civil war. Uh, the Criminal Code Act, so far as they are participating in the conflict with a proscribed terrorist group. And it's also against the arms sanctions that we've imposed on the Syrian regime. And that involves not just not supplying arms to the current Syrian government, but not assisting in any way in providing assistance in a military conflict to the Syrian government. Yusuf Toprakaya was well known to Australian authorities. He was named in this secret 2010 cable from the US Embassy in Canberra, requesting 23 Australians be added to the terrorist screening database. Toprakaya left behind his wife and family, who live here in this small fibro house in Melbourne's northern suburbs. Yeah, it's very, it's very, uh... Emotional, yeah, sensitive. So we just, um, yeah, we just don't put on Absolutely. The top Rakayas aren't the only family mourning a father or brother who's died in Syria. The champ is here! The champ is here! The champ is here! The champ is here! Roger Abbas, a Sunni Muslim and champion kickboxer, is another Australian who gave his life to the Syrian cause. He was a very soft-hearted person who loved everyone, who hated hurting anyone. His sister, Sonia Abbas, last saw him in mid-2012 when Roger Abbas left Australia for Syria. And then anyway, he goes, I'm going. And I said, OK. He goes, I said, can you wait? He goes, no, no, you can follow me there. I'll meet you there. I said, I don't think I'm going to go that soon. You'll be back. He said, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to go now and then I'm, I'll go again with you. So he left. I said, good luck. Less than two months later, he was dead. There's bombing happening, so we thought to be safer, I'll keep out for now. Um, Sonia Abbas travelled to Syria to try and find her brother's body, witnessing the humanitarian crisis firsthand, a result of the war between Sunni Muslims and Shiite President Bashar al-Assad. Another victim? Sonia Abbas says her brother Roger went to Syria to do humanitarian work, but there's evidence to suggest otherwise. Well, some of the individuals, when they go over to a place like Syria, will use a front cover saying that they're working for a humanitarian organization and actually be going over to join up with a rebel group. Aaron Zellin is a leading U.S. academic based at the Washington Institute. He's been researching and analysing martyrdom notices posted on the websites of jihadist groups, including this one belonging to Roger Abbas. 
it's definitely possible that they could have been providing humanitarian relief, but in one case uh, with Roger Abbas, it actually noted that he was fighting with Jabhat al-Nusra, and he actually had his own kunya, um, which was essentially a war name, and usually individuals who pick up these types of second war names are usually affiliated with more radical organizations. Jabhat al-Nusra is an extremist Sunni group and designated terrorist organization with ties to al-Qaeda. In Syria, it's carrying out bombings and retribution killings against the Assad regime. This video was posted online two weeks ago, showing al-Nusra rebels executing Assad supporters. So how do you respond to the rumours that perhaps he was uh, doing more than, say, humanitarian work? Okay. That he was at the front line fighting? All right. To be quite honest with you, after what I witnessed, doesn't matter whether he was a fighter or he was doing humanitarian. Who was doing that for? Syrian civilians. So it doesn't matter. Roger Abbas's friend and fellow kickboxer, 22-year-old Sami Salma, was in Syria at the same time. Salma was killed in an explosion near the front line of Aleppo in April. A believer has the obligation of supporting the other believers no matter where they are. Roger Abbas was inspired by this man, high-profile Sydney Sheikh Mustafa al majdoub who made this speech at an anti-Assad rally in Western Sydney in February. Every time there is someone who is killed for this religion, this fire will only get stronger and stronger. Seven months later, in August 2012, Majzoub was dead. His family declined 7.30's requests for an interview, telling us that Majzoub was killed by a rocket attack while doing humanitarian work. The case of the four Australians is that all of them have ended up with martyrdom notices on jihadi forums. And there have been many foreigners who have died in Syria, but not all of the individuals who are foreigners who die in Syria end up with having martyrdom notices on jihadi forums. Therefore, I think the allegations are somewhat suspect, or potentially they did originally go there for huma to help out in a humanitarian capacity and then joined up with some rebel forces. This website says Sheikh Majoub was killed while leading a rebel platoon in the northern Syrian town of Salma. He named his platoon after his grandfather, and it was there in Salma, where a rocket from the enemies of Allah hit three men, alhamdulillah, Sheikh Mustafa being one of them, and they were all martyred, as we reckon them. When news of Majzoub's death hit Sydney, hundreds of young Muslim men flocked to the Al Rasala bookstore in Bankstown, Western Sydney, to pay him tribute. <laughs> Since it opened just over one year ago, the Al Rasala bookstore has gained a reputation as a centre of Islamic extremism. Sheikh Majzoub gave his final lecture here. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah Azza wa Jal reward you. What do you know of the Al Rasala bookstore in Bankstown? I, uh, the Al Rasala bookstore, especially, is very secret. It's very secretive. They conduct their, their businesses in a very secretive way. Some community leaders, like Jamal Dahoud, are concerned. I tried, my, I tried to explore who, who's behind this group. We can't. It is very secretive, way, and this is very worrying for us in a democracy to have some secretive uh, organization. They conduct all their businesses in very secretive way. So you do not know who the sheikhs are? No. 7.30 has been investigating Al Rasala's activities and the people behind it, identifying four key sheikhs. All are radical, and all are encouraging Australians to get involved in Syria. This is Sheikh Abu Suleiman, 
pictured here delivering a lecture at the Al Rasala bookstore last year, encouraging his audience of young Muslim men to join the jihad in Syria. For us to support them with our wealth and with our blood and with whatever we possess. Sheikh Omar El Banna is another key teacher at Al Rasala. I want to pass on two points to you that you are responsible for what's happening there. Second is, what should we be doing? When one organ is in pain, the remaining parts of the body, they show care. Is Syria now the problem? Allah will ask you, what did you do? This is Musa Ser Antonio. Allah is our protector. He is our protector and they have no protector. Once an Italian Christian, now a passionate convert to Islam, teaching at Al Rasala. Here, Musa Ser Antonio promotes the Al Qaeda backed jihadist group, Jabhat al Nusra, in Syria. Inshallah, as one of the leaders from Jabhat al Nusra said, if we take this, and I don't want to give false hope, but if we take this, Inshallah, victory is near. <laughs> Al Rasala has another, even more infamous sheikh, Abu Suhaib, known to the authorities as Bilal Kazal, a former baggage handler for Qantas, trained at a military camp in Afghanistan, and a confidant of Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Kazal was lecturing at Al Rasala until mid 2012 when he was convicted and sentenced to nine years jail for producing a do-it-yourself terrorism book. Al Rasala posted this video of Kazal online, titled Final Advice, before his imprisonment. <laughs> Do you believe that th these bookstores are radicalising young, young men? Definitely. If you go inside and... Uh and read what uh, what what uh, DVDs and uh, and books they they're distributing. It's all about radical Islam. Everyone has the obligation of calling to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The possibility that extremist sheikhs are radicalising youth at home before they go to Syria has Australian authorities on high alert. Are you aware of the sheikhs behind Al Rasala and what they're teaching, preaching? Um. I am aware of Al Rasala and I'm aware of some of the activities that go on there and some of the, individual, the individuals involved. Yes. Would it concern you if these sheikhs and teachers at Al Rasala were promoting violent jihad? All of that has to be of concern, certainly. But I would also say that our federal authorities are very much involved in some of the issues you've just raised, certainly in terms of fundraising and people going, leaving Australia and going to fight overseas. The federal authorities have to be involved and have primacy in a lot of those issues. If, if, if there's evidence of that, though, <clears throat> of this radicalisation... It is of concern. It's definitely of concern. Allah refuses to honour the one who accepts humiliation. Clearly there's a radicalisation that's involved in wanting to participate in this kind of military uh, and violent activity. Uh, there's a concern before people go, but there's a concern after they return as well. And the Director General of ASIO has spoken of this, I've spoken of this, um, that if you've gone to Syria, participated in the conflict there, particularly with a terrorist group, and then returned to Australia, it's likely that you will return not just with um, terrorist ideology, but with more knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. What would you say to the sheikhs or teachers at Al Rasala who are encouraging young men to go to Syria? I, I, clearly that's not a, uh, an advisable option. I mean, sending people into a war zone is, is something that's quite heartless and, uh, and quite selfish, I have to say, for somebody to be advocating that others go and fight in a war when they're not prepared to do it themselves. It tells me something about those who are advocating that. Karen Meldrum-Hanna reporting there.